hi guys i hope you're doing well so we are now resuming our golang and react to do project series um, so in our router.go i saw one small mistake the delete all tasks has to be capital d and in our middleware uh, we'll again set it here to capital d and then the function that it's going to call the, the function that talks to the database that has a small d which is completely fine with us, right? And uh, so here you're noticing a pattern here. There are some functions like let's say get all tasks and create task and task complete. All these functions have capital um, C, capital T like that. And the function that they're calling inside um, inside this have, uh, you know, small letters, for example, get all tasks. So your get all task um, function is calling get all tasks and this one has a small g in the beginning right so that's how we're differentiating between these functions now let's uh, in this one in this video we'll try to complete our get all uh, task functions let's do that now i'll have to limit these videos to 10 minutes each i can't go above 10 minutes because i have uh, some calls that i have to take after this so i'm really sorry but um, you know, that's uh, 10 minutes is the max I can do for the next few days and then we'll again switch back to the longer format 30-40 minutes videos and if you've not seen uh, the Golang authorization video I, I request you to go and check it out because that's a huge uh, video series and uh, all of the all of the videos are quite big so uh, you learn a lot basically in that series all right and here we'll say collection dot find so collection.find is basically our uh, MongoDB uh, kind of a syntax which is going to basically find uh, you know something in the collection and here we'll say context.background, so it's going to when you when you send something empty here it's an empty query it's going to basically return all of the uh, tasks it has in that collection right whatever comes here you'll catch it in a variable called cursor and then you'll also have uh, a provision for error checking and we'll check for the error so we'll say if error not equal to nil we log out the fatal error and then we'll define a variable called results. So we'll say var results it's of type primitive dot m. And in this cursor that we have received, so we loop over that. So we'll say for cursor dot next context dot background. And inside the loop, We'll define a variable called result, which is of type bson.m. And we'll say cursor.decode result. So I'm sure if, if you've been following my videos, you already know by now um, what this decode function does. Right? It's whatever we get, it's going to decode it in the format of result. And in our case, the result is this that we've already defined here, which is based on dot m. And we're going to capture this in a variable called e. So we'll check if e is not equal to nil. And it's, and we're going to basically log out e, which is going to be the error. So this basically turns the error for us. And we want to return this <coughs> results, which is a slice of primitive M and result and this, re and this results contains uh, every single result, which is of type bson.m. And here for results, we're going to say append results comma result. What it's going to do is basically it's going to take the results um, slice and it's keep going to it's going to, uh, you know, one by one append result, whatever you result you get here is going to append that one by one, one by one here to the results slice. And this whole slice is what you retrieve, uh, you return from here, right? So you basically um, call the collection.find function, 
and you pass an empty query to that so that which basically in mongodb terms it means that you want everything that's stored in the database you're not you're not uh, sending any particular uh, query you're not saying name is equal to this or id is equal to this right or you're not using and and or those kind of queries you're just saying when you send an empty query to mongodb find function it gives you everything that it has in that collection so in our collection you know we'll get all the tasks back so one by one it'll go through those tasks and then it'll you know decode them uh, because mongodb stores json right and it's going to append them and with with json the thing is golang cannot work directly with json so that's why we want to uh, decode it first the result that we get and then we want to append it now to append it obviously this the uh, you know um, we the the format uh, you know shouldn't have shouldn't be uh, json and only then you can append it using golang and that's why you're appending it right so you decode it and then you append it to a, to a, a slice and you return the slice from this function all right now here you'll have to do a couple of things so you'll say cursor dot error and you're just catching the error here so you'll say if error not equal to nil log dot fatal error and then you'll just close it by saying context dot background and return results from this function which is what you want right so i hope you know by now what get all results uh, get all tasks does basically now let's work on the task complete function as well since we have some time so the task complete function takes in a task right and it um, let's create an id for this task so we'll say primitive dot object id from hex task let's create a filter criteria so we'll say bson dot m what you're doing here is that uh, that particular task you got the id for that task and that id is what you're going to pass as a filter into the database so that you get the task of that id and that's how you'll operate upon it by saying that uh, by changing the status to true all right so that's all we're doing so here we'll say update is equal to json dot m dollar set Based on the M status true, and we'll say collection dot update one. So update one is a uh, MongoDB function which requires you to find something, and then uh, as in this is the criteria that helps you to find the record, and this is the criteria that helps you to set the new value. So you'll say dollar set and status status is equal to true for this id that's that's what's happening here so in this update one function you're passing the filter and update so we'll say filter comma update query and whatever you get back from here you'll just store it in result and it might also return error and you'll obviously check for the error so if error not equal to nil you'll say log dot fatal error and here you'll print out the modified count so you'll say fmp dot println modified count or result dot modified count so in this video we were able to finish two important functions here get all tasks and task complete now we need to work on in the next video we need to work on insert one task undo task delete one task and delete all tasks and 
that will kind of complete our entire backend which is quite simple as you as you've noticed and then we'll start working on our front end so before we start working on our front end this time we'll actually try running our server code so that just to see everything is working fine and if there's no error there um, for us to handle so thanks a lot for watching and see you in the next video do subscribe to the channel so that you come to know when the next video of this series comes out and see you in the next episode thank you